video we're going to be taking a look at passing variables to JS from our module. We're going to learn how to pass variables from our controller to a JS file. We're going to quickly create a controller, quickly create a JavaScript library with a JavaScript file. We're going to pass a variable, handle and use the variable in our JavaScript file, all in an example. So here we have a Drupal instance installed and here is its code base and we're going to be creating a new module that we're going to call Drupal up JS set and in it we're going to quickly create a info file and a router with a controller That's perfect. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new JavaScript file. So we're creating a new file in the JS folder and we're going to call it JS set JS. That's perfect. So here we're going to be writing basically JavaScript functions. There we go. And we're going to start it like this. And we're going to say function. And we're going to say dollar sign Drupal and Drupal settings. We're going to be using and we're going to say use strict and in the Drupal behaviors dot JS Drupal Drupal test we're going to create and we're going to here attach function and we're going to basically pass the context and the settings in it and that's mostly it we're going to be adding as a dependency the jQuery we are going to be also adding as dependency the Drupal settings. So the thing we want to do here in this context we already have jQuery and we're going to say that we want the element that has class JSVAR from here once for the execution of this function to basically append to it an element. So first let's go ahead and create let's say a button element with class button so that it looks like button and yes let's go ahead and add first a simple text like pink and let's go ahead and close the button that's good for now and we're basically using once because the behaviors functions are being executed on every ajax request and with drupal 
at least the Ajax request that is executed almost every time is the big pipe page rendering which means that this if we're not using once would be called several times let's go ahead and say console lock so that we see how many times it would be called without the once so let's just say pink here and the next thing we want to do is we want to add in our module a library so we're going to say new file and we're going to create drupal up js set libraries yaml and in it we're going to be declaring a library called js example and we're going to have js file here and our js file we're going to add js set dot js in the js folder and as dependencies we're going to be adding the core jquery and we're going to be adding also the core jquery once and we're going to be adding the drupal settings that's perfect so the last thing that we want to do is we want to actually pass a variable from our controller to the library and we also want to attach the library so let's go ahead and first attach the library we're going to simply do it by adding in our build array let's go ahead and say we want here to add attached and we're going to say library and we're going to add our library here and the library is basically namespaced with our module and in our library cml we use this key so we're adding it here this means that the library would be added and the last thing in our controller that we want to do is we want to the build array we want to add for the attached to the drupal settings we want to add a js example namespace and we want to add a title here this is going to be some random value and since we're extending the controller base here we might as well just use this config and we could render the site name for example so we could say system site and we could simply get the name let me quickly show you from where i got that so in core in the modules and then system if we simply check to the config folder under install we see that there is a system site system site and inside the system site we have name and that's the name of our drupal instance that we basically added as we were installing drupal for example and let's go ahead and now simply get this value in our javascript file so we can do it very easily by simply here saying we want to get the drupal settings that's the thing that is injected here and we could say here js example that is the namespace that we added here js example and then we want to say just we're getting the title this is the title so simply in our page we would be adding a button with the site name in our custom page that we created here so the next thing we want to do is we want to activate this page and we want to see if it actually works 
So let's go to manage and extend and let's go ahead and search for Drupal and here it is Drupal JavaScript example and if we install it and if we go to the page that we created with it it says access denied which means that something is wrong in our routing file so we see we have requirements and we have permission it's supposed to be permission let's go ahead and clear the cache that was absolutely my mistake and now we have actually the page and it is creating a button that is presumably having the name of our Drupal instance so if we presumably change it it would be changed also here and something else that is interesting here is in the console that the ping is actually called five times so that is the use of the jQuery once so that as we used once our button is added just once not five times as the number of times the behaviors are called so if we just quickly go ahead and add a test text for example test and if we save and if we go back to the page we see that our button is actually pulling the site name from the configuration by using the config injected service in it and our JavaScript is working as expected so if you like this video please check the links in the description subscribe don't forget to click the bell icon to receive notifications for new videos share comment if you have any questions and thanks for watching Thank you.